Let's go. Uh, so, ciao a tutti. Uh, this is the only sentence I'm allowed to say in Italian. So, <laughs> uh, welcome here. Uh, it's really a pleasure to see this room full of people, and it's really awesome. Thank you for um, the trust you deserve to me. Uh, so, let's go. Uh, in this talk, we will talk about um, how to upgrade uh, a system built with a uh, build root as a base system. Um, I really appreciated the talk uh, that uh, Luca did uh, a couple of talks, talks ago because he went really in depth uh, into build root and uh, gave me uh, a strong uh, encouragement to, uh, <laughs> to go a little little less into the details of Beatroot, more uh, on the uh, updating side. So uh, feel free to ask me or interrupt me if you want to um, something more deep uh, about the arguments I'm uh, touching here. Um, a little bit of presentation. This is me on my enduro bike because I'm first of all <laughs> an enduro racer. Um, I started contributing to build route in 2014. Uh, my first patch was the mono package and, and I actually the maintainer of the mono package, one of the uh, worst and biggest package in build route. So if you want to, to do something small, don't use, please don't use the mono package because it's really huge. Um, one of the latest thing I did is uh, was contributing the Golang uh, infrastructure. So if you want to add uh, Golang package to build root, you can use that uh, infrastructure to be um, more uh, productive because it's easy, really easy to, to add a package. Um, I'm a DevOps. Uh, I'm proud of this software. It's called S3 Point in Time Restore because it's actually the only tool that you can use to restore from S3 um, a backup copy of your data. If you, add, if you enable on your S3 bucket uh, the versioning, uh, you are actually not allowed to uh, take out a copy um, of the bucket in a certain point in time. This is the only tool uh, that mm, that does uh, this, this 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 thing, and it's used um, really from from uh, hundred p of people that sometimes uh, anger me on mailing lists and <laughs> ask me every question. So uh, if you if you ever in the need of you. Uh, Taking out something from S3, uh, use this tool. So um, we will focus on, the, on these three main topics uh, in, in this presentation. And um, uh, I want to be a little bit um, on high level uh, on the build root side. First of all, how many of you use a build root in a, a product, uh, in a um, product and production environment, in a, in a product that you sell? Um, nobody, okay, a couple of person, good, three, <laughs> not so much, but um, uh, I'll try to uh, explain you how to um, use a build route for building your project and uh, your product to sell, okay, so stay with me. Uh, the second part uh, will be an introduction to SB Update, uh, the software that we choose to use to uh, manage the update of the embedded systems. You know, uh, updating embedded system is um, uh, an headache, and uh, software update um, tries to solve most of the problems related to uh, updating uh, an embedded system in a clean and easy way. So uh, we found that it worked it worked well for us, and we try to uh, sell the software, <laughs> even if if not, we are not. Um, uh, related to the software, but uh, it, it worked well for us, and so we hope it works well for you. On the third part, uh, I will show you um, an example, uh, a proof of concept, uh, a demo of a possible integration of build root and software update. Software update should generate, uh, we will see in the next few slides, we will generate a package. To generate a package, you have to do some steps, and this um, automating system does the steps for you. Um, so, mm, not so many of you uh, have ever used build root as a base system for um, your own stack, so mm, I try to summarize what you have to do to use that um, uh, proficiently in, in your product. 
Um, first of all, what it is Bill wrote, if you um, assisted to this slide from Luca, um, you are good. But if you don't, I strongly suggest to uh, see uh, the PDF as soon as soon is uh, published online or uh, re review the video on uh, the, the registered video. Um, build root is an embedded, uh, is a, um, I, I love to like it, an, a firmware generator because um, what it produces is binary images that you can uh, push, that you can write on the memory of your uh, device, uh, NAND, uh, SD card, or whatever you, you have on your, on your board. Um, so uh, it uh, automates uh, all these steps to cross compile uh, all the software that um, built your stack. And it finally produces binary images. So it's more a firmware generator than an embedded distribution, okay? Because, um, like Luca said, uh, Yocto is more on that side because it gives you the ability to build packages that you can install and uh, remove when with IPG tool. With the IPG tool, Buildroot does not this. Buildroot is a uh, it's static if you want, and you can absolutely uh, mount your rootfs as uh, read only. So when you have build your uh, image, that image will be forever. Um, and, it's, and it's different from the Yocto uh, in this point. It's written mainly in key config and make. So if you are a bit um, accustomed to key config and make that you can find in Linux uh, kernel, U-boot, and several other project, projects, you can, do, uh, you can work with um, build root really, really easily. Okay, this is an uh, introductory slide. Um, on the right, you can find menu config and xconfig, uh, two of the main interfaces that you can use to uh, customize the build root configuration to your needs. On the left side, an, an extract uh, of um, the help file that you can find uh, uh, in build root. So if you if you are not aware of the build root options, you can do a make help on the command line, and you will get all the things you can do uh, with build root. Okay, um, if you are um, building a product on build root, probably you will end up doing this daily routing. Okay, um, you, first of all, you have to start somewhere. Uh, you start from a dev configuration. Uh, in this case, um, this is a def, def config that I choose for, for example. Okay, this def configuration is a file that is distributed in build root and it creates a basic um, build system for building the instruction contained in this def, def config. So the def config is uh, the configuration that you will build and that will produce uh, the binary images to, that you will flash on your board. Um, in this uh, example, I uh, attached the O equals option that is used to do a out of tree compiling of build root. So you can um, leave your sources intact and build in another subdirectory. So the, uh, the other subdirectory contains only binary files that you produced. And this is very useful because um, you don't risk to mess up the source tree that you have locally. Probably you have downloaded with Git and uh, uh, messing up with binary files, uh, configura your configuration could be cumbersome to uh, get out if, you, if you're not um, aware um, of how build root works. So when you did this, you uh, can move to the uh, output directory and do a make xconfig. That xconfig, um, you will use that xconfig to personalize and use them and modify the uh, configuration that you will build. With making minus L, I added minus L because uh, it's, <laughs> it's default for me. It, it permits to make to use all the cores that is available in your P, uh, CPU, so it, it's faster. Uh, you compile and obviously you, you redo from the beginning uh, for each uh, modification you can uh, add to your configuration. So this is the, your build, your uh, daily routine. You start a, a configuration, modify the configuration, make, clean, rebuild, and, and so on. Okay, 
Uh, when you uh, per, uh, modify, customize your configuration, what you get is a .config file, and is, it is uh, saved into the binary folder of your build root um, build root build folder. Uh, don't uh, please don't save this file in your uh, versioning system because it is huge and uh, it is uh, really difficult to maintain. But use the save dev config uh, command of build root to obtain a um, shrinked, a sm uh, smaller configuration with only the option you really enabled in your configuration. So you start from dev config, do your own stuff, and then uh, get your uh, dev config that you can use, re reuse to build the product. Obviously, you are in a uh, multiple developer, develop developer environment, so uh, you have to share your configuration with the others. This is the configuration, the configuration on the right. This is the one that you have to share to your uh, mates. Okay, uh, let's dive into build root customization for your project. Uh, you have to do several things because uh, probably as uh, build root as you download from the uh, build root website is not as useful as you, as you want. Probably you have to add your software, your um, configuration, a uh, bunch of files, logo of your customer, everything that makes that uh, system a production system for your customer. So uh, this, this is a, um, uh, a list of possible example, the possible customization that you can do on your, um, on your build root configuration. Um, you can use a custom config file for each one of the packages that you have inside your build root package tree. So if you want to personalize the build root configuration, you can add a busy box, excuse, uh, sorry, a busy box. Uh, you want to uh, modify your busy box uh, configuration, you can add a busybox.config file. That busybox.config files overrides that one um, uh, included in build root, the, the default one, so it um, customizes the busy box you are building. You can do this for Linux kernel, U-boot, and several other packages. Uh, you can add uh, pre post scripts. There are several hooks you can uh, use inside build root to uh, compile, to uh, build, to attach some files. Do some mangling to the standard uh, build root flow that produces the simplest images you can you can do so uh, attaching to a hooks uh, modify the behavior of the build root building uh, of your configuration and then there you can do whatever you want like uh, sign in the image or uh, uh, add files or do whatever you want one of the things that uh, is did the most is add, adding users or uh, custom devices uh, you have to create device nodes. How to create device nodes? Uh, build root uses fake root, and it's really difficult to uh, mess with fake root to create custom device nodes. You can add a device table.txt where you um, end up writing uh, where the device node is, uh, the permission, and uh, who is uh, responsible for that device node, the group, the user. Whatever artifacts you can add whatever you want. You can add your uh, your own payload, your own files, uh, configuration, whatever you want. Okay, your customization should be in a board directory uh, inside the build root tree, uh, as you can see from the, the um, box on the right. There is a, a board directory. In, in this case, we are, we have we have an example board. Uh, this is example board contains that. Um, files that mm, override, modify the behavior of your dev config, your build root standard configuration. Uh, another thing that you usually do in your uh, um, software is adding uh, a package. Adding a package means that you uh, instruct build root to cross compile your package to prepare to be included in the final root FS built by build root. Adding a package um, implies that you uh, add a config.in, a package make file, and a package hash to be uh, usable by the build root build system. 
Also, you have to add a package config.in that makes the package selectable in the UI. So if you want to add the package in the UI, in seeing it in makexconfig, you, you have to go to the package um, file, the uh, config.in file in the package directory and add your package there. Okay, uh, the first point. Mm, where to commit your customization? Uh, where do you, have to, do you have to save your customization? Usually, uh, what I see the most is um, committing directly to the build, build root source tree. Um, I don't know if you ever um, worked with a BSP given by a producer. Uh, build root BSP uh, given by the producer are usually ages uh, behind the current main line because uh, they uh, usually commit to the tree and they s end up stuck with that version forever because they cannot backport all the patches they did to the main, loan ma the main build root master and uh, the, the, the um, configuration end up stuck there. So uh, please uh, don't do this, don't commit to the build root source uh, tree. Uh, because you are forking build root, first of all, and forking build root means that you have to maintain your own fork. Uh, bumping could be impossible, as we said. Uh, probably you end up with an update, updated build root version, because if, if it's not updatable, uh, build root version could be really uh, old when you need it. Um, you can uh, end up with licensing problems because uh, you're probably not allowed to mix your uh, packages, um, your not open source packages with um, build root source 3 that, that, uh, uh, because it has a license, a GPL license that uh, um, makes practically impossible to mix non uh, open source code with open source code. So it's not advis advisable to commit to the build root, to the build root 3. Uh, if you really want to do that, please uh, send a patch on the mailing list and do that uh, modification, uh, push that modification mainline uh, because um, it, it could be useful to many other people and uh, useful to you that um, because it makes moving your uh, build root source tree uh, forward when a new release, a new version is released. So, where to save? Uh, BR2 external to the rescue. Uh, BR2 external is a mechanism where you put your own files. Um, it's like build root. It's a tree that is similar to the build root one. It contains the same directories. Uh, it has only three more files, uh, and uh, they are external.desk, config.in, and external mk. You end up <coughs> writing these three files and uh, the directory you choose for your BR2 external, it, it is um, included in the build root uh, compilation. So you can use it like it was uh, always there. Uh, if you do a make ecos X config, you can end up seeing your packages, your configuration, everything there, um, as it was uh, there from the beginning. So uh, we have another workflow now, uh, another daily routing. Um, first of all, you have to do uh, it's your BR2 external. Then you have to uh, recompile your source tree with uh, BR2 external as a parameter. As you can see, uh, I added BR2 external as a parameter here. Uh, modify your configuration, save and rebuild. And the the, um, the workflow is a, li a little bit more complicated. Now. Um, and uh, we will uh, see into the tie into more detail this later. You can add uh, your own make file, so you can add something glue, a uh, glue that you can use to build your configuration in a more automated and useful way. And this uh, make file um, it makes easier to um, commit uh, uh, your modification to a tree that it's not a build root tree. So you can co uh, commit only the, the personalization, the customization you did for obtain your product. Uh, okay, let's go uh, on the part two. Mm. 
an introduction to SB update and its field of use. Uh, because I wrote introduction, bec because uh, SB update is, a, is really a big software and it, it covers um, many areas of updating a system. So uh, I tried to, um, uh, to, to catch the, the things that are most useful to a um, person that uh, are implementing an updated mechanism to, uh, to build root. Okay, so um, which is the best way to implement a software update for my build root configuration and my build root software based project? Uh, obvi obviously, uh, there are really um, many more documentation for SV, SV updates. You can, uh, if you want, uh, in the, at the end of these slides, I added a link to a presentation that the main author of uh, Software Update did uh, and uh, at uh, uh, the Embedded Linux, Linux conference last year, um, if, not, if I remember correctly, and then uh, have a good idea of what Software Update does completely. Okay, uh, first question. Uh, if you don't want to end up like this guy, um, do updating, uh, implement updating of your um, build root based system. Because <laughs> usually when someone asks uh, why uh, update is not implemented, the, the response is this one. My boss said, why do we need updates? Uh, who, who need updates? Uh, nobody needs updates. But this is not uh, the correct response. The response should be, we have up updates. Uh, they are easy to implement, why not? Okay, so SV Update is a software. Um, it's an, an update agent that you can install in your um, Linux distribution, in your embedded distribution. This agent is responsible to um, update the software you have on your um, embedded system. Uh, what it does is um, completely different from what you are acquainted to. Um, it doesn't do an, up the, an APT update, APT upgrade uh, like uh, on your uh, desktop computer, but it's more of a overriding the NAND or uh, the MMC card with a new version of the software and doing that in a way that the system boots again after the update. And if it doesn't boot, uh, there is a um, fail-safe mechanism that permits me to redo the update and try to be consistent every time. Okay, uh, it has ton tons of feature features, really. If you, if you look at uh, documentation, you're, you're uh, overwhelmed with <laughs> a feature that uh, uh, SVAPID has. Uh, minimal list here. Um, it can overwrite practically any, any format of a binary image file, MMC, SD, RAW, NAND, NOR, SPI. Um, it can be used to deliver a single image for several targets. So you can have uh, boards with different hardware, different CPUs, different architecture, and build a um, software update file that uh, supports all, all of the applications, so all of the hardware. So it's really easy to build something that stand up in, uh, in real field usage. You have only one file. If you, uh, the the uh, most common case uh, is that you have a field engineer that uh, have to do um, an update, you can uh, give him a USB pen with a single file and that single file works on all the hardware he can end up uh, to mess with. So uh, an ARM uh, instead of an X86. Uh, single image uh, distributable with all uh, various sections for all the hardware. It supports several storage medium to distribute the update. Uh, the USB K was an example, but it has an integrated WebREST server. Uh, so you can do something like your uh, router does. Um, you uh, give to a user a web guy, uh, the user uploads the SV file, the update begins, and the system reboots after the update completes. So uh, easy uh, and uh, painless. It can download by itself an update, and it can uh, uh, update the system in unmanned, unmanedly. So 
uh, without user intervention. And one of the things uh, the thing I, can, I appreciate the most is the integration with Oakbit. Uh, anybody here uh, ever heard about Oakbit, Oakbit server? Not good. <laughs> Oakbit server is an open source product to manage massively deploy of uh, updating image. So you can add t um, hundreds of devices, thousands of de devices, and uh, Oakbit uh, takes memory, takes um, um, a table where, uh, on which hardware it did correctly the update, uh, where the update file it, where the update should be retried, and everything is uh, manageable in a good looking web guy. Uh, it scales, it can be deployed on AWS if you want, you can use S3 as a storage, so um, it's, it's a system built to stand, it's not a um, toy that you have to install on your own server and uh, you end up uh, uh, likely stuck because your server is too small to uh, manage the load uh, of your infrastructure. Okay, um, it supports various, um, various um, image formats. It could be GZIP, Terrible, various things. Uh, it's up to you to choose um, the, the format that best suits your needs. Um, it can be used to um, update a whole system, not, not only the embedded part based on Linux, but you, you can use to update also um, an FPGA or a microcontroller that is uh, um, on the same board of the one you are uh, updating because because it can check the version of the software installed of that microcontroller and it's able to uh, choose if the microcontroller should be updated or, or not. Um, everything could be described inside the configuration file of software. It's power of safe. So if you build your system in uh, resiliency, um, probably you end up with a system that boots uh, again after a, a power off during uh, the update phase. Probably you have to redo your update, but the system boots, uh, st still boots, okay? Uh, this is uh, just to show you the web guy. Uh, it's, it's really um, simple, but uh, you, you have uh, HTML, CSS, and everything to make your own version. This is the Oakbit, uh, oh, sorry, the Oakbit guy that you can use to uh, manage your deploy, the OSB pen. And, uh. Okay, uh, let's go uh, to the to the meat. Um, the update strategies that you can use with software update. So uh, this is the, I think, the first decision that you that you should do when you are planning to build something that is updatable with the software update. You have to uh, choose which is the strategy you want to use. Uh, the, uh, here I present three of the most used strategies uh, with all pros and cons, and then I will show you our strategy that in my opinion is, uh, is better in several ways. So first point is plain uh, update strategy. There's no redundancy. You run your SV update on this um, memory, a NAND, flash, an MMC, whatever you want. Uh, you could, can end up with a booting system, but if something, something goes wrong, you, you are not able to recover the board. Probably the board is bricked. Uh, it's not bricked if you um, strongly decide to not upgrade the bootloader and this, is, this could be a policy because um, I know uh, several companies that um, ask this policy internally never updates the bootloader so it's the first thing that they put on a new board and they test so absolutely to be sure that that bootloader should not be touched anymore. Uh, so probably you not you don't end up with a bricked board, but you have to manually okay repair reset this board to a working state. You can have a mixed A B um, strategy where you have all, all the bootloader where it should be a double copy copy of the kernel, uh, root FS and data. Um, it's a strategy that could be work. Could, could be work, but you have to implement um, anyway um, uh, the uh, double copy mechanism of kernel, double copy me mechanism um, 
the bootloader should choose which one of the uh, two kernels should be booted. Uh, so you uh, should have um, something that checks if this kernel is bootable or not, if, uh, up, if it is updated correctly or, or not. Um, then you have your root FS that is not um, redundant, so if something goes wrong updating the root FS, you end up with a system that doesn't boot, but in this case, you can probably recover a working kernel and manually uh, again, restart the update and save the board. You can have a full A-B mechanism where everything, as you can see, is double. So if the update goes wrong on the A side, you can boot from the B side. Obviously, you have to implement the bootloader part when you decide where, um, where boot from, because you have uh, information about uh, working or not working parts of your file system. And, um, the problem with this approach is that uh, it doubles the copy of everything and uh, as you can see, uh, sizes are not in scale here, but uh, you end up with a very small uh, rootfs area and data area because you are wasting uh, so much space, so much space for doubling everything. Then I present the approach we used <coughs> is a mixed AB plus recovery. Um, I like the idea of having a recovery, probably because uh, we work uh, the most with Android with <laughs> that has a recovery mechanism. Uh, obviously, you have to implement something. It's not free, but this guarantee that um, when something go wrong, goes wrong, the system is able to automatically enter in a recovery mode. And from that recovery mode, you can re-update your system in a, a, a good way. Okay, and this can be handled even from your field engineer that doesn't know how the device works. Uh, it, it is presented with a recovery uh, prompt and uh, it end up, ends up um, pushing a USB <coughs> pen drive with all the things inside. So, um, why we love this approach? Because it's always available. Uh, the recovery is um, doubled. Uh, the bootloader is doubled, so uh, if anything goes wrong in the first part of the, the update, we end up with a working uh, up bootloader and a working recovery. Starting from this recovery is always, po is always possible, unmanagedly or not, but it's, it is there, so you can use it when you, you need it. It's easier to implement than a full AB because you don't have to uh, check of the possible combination of what is working or what is not working. Um, it's advisable to have a, re a redundant bootloader and a redundant recovery. You, uh, you're not forced to have a redundant recovery or a redundant bootloader. Why? Because if you do not upgrade the bootloader and the recovery is uh, read-only on a section of the uh, your uh, storage area that is, it is not used, probably you can safely assure, assume that uh, that area is always available, so uh, you end up with only a uh, re uh, recovery copy. But I strongly suggest you to uh, double the recovery because uh, in the case you want to uh, update the recovery because it could be um, uh, reasonable to do because you have uh, added something to the recovery that uh, should be present also on your um, customer device. Having a second, a double copy of the recovery means that if something's gone wrong, you can always reboot your board from a working condition. Okay, uh, the assumption here this, is that uh, recovery runs from memory and so it can update everything. Okay. Um, even the bootloader, if you want. Why add that uh, uh, yellow box DSPL? Because uh, to implement this uh, scenario uh, requires having a uh, ESPL. Uh, oh, sorry, ESPL is the next slide. Okay, uh, a little two uh, words on what a recovery is. A recovery is um, a file system that you build using build root. So it, it's not uh, an alien thi thing. You can use your, your uh, workflow to do the same thing you did uh, until the, next, the day before you implemented the recovery. Um, 
you have to write a little bit of custom logic to uh, enter the recovery mode and to uh, uh, make the user um, uh, use make the, the recovery usable. Okay, you can um, prompt the user uh, with a guy. Okay, uh, you have a, you have a screen on your device, so on the uh, user interface interface you can see a message that asks to uh, insert the USB pen. You can enter the web in interface, so when the device is bricked, or where the, when the device should be updated, a uh, web guy is always uh, av available, so you can upload your uh, SV file and uh, start from there. Uh, you can have a user interaction uh, with um, the user from the screen or a button, for example. A user press a button, the system goes into the recovery mode, and uh, uh, from there, it could be upgraded. There are several strategies you can use, and it's up to you which one you should use. So, the SPL, uh, how many of you know the SPL? Probably all of you. Um, it's a smaller subsection of a bootloader that loads from static RAM, usually, and it is used to, to do a few things like uh, uh, starting the real memory or uh, powering the system in a certain way, uh, doing something with GBIO because uh, when your board power up, powers up, you want to uh, glow a LED uh, in as soon as possible. Uh, here we use the SPL to implement uh, the double copy mechanism for the bootloader. Um, here I'm referring to U-Boot. Uh, I don't know if other uh, bootloaders support um, redundancy for uh, bootloader, but uh, U-Boot does. So if you want to implement this type of redundancy for system updates, please do use U-Boot. Uh, I added a minimal configuration that you can use to implement the SPL mechanism in your U-Boot configuration. From now on, um, the, boot, the SPL should be written in a certain area of your board, uh, follow your, uh, the documentation of your board to understand how flash the SPL. SPL is uh, a little bit crucial, so it should be generally flashed in a, a way that is specific of your system uh, on chip or um, the board you are working with. And then, when you have the SPL ready, the SPL, choose which one of the bootloader to load and it boots. Okay, mm, this part is to understand how um, you can uh, uh, prepare your bootloader to be, uh, be, to be um, uh, AB compatible. So, um, again, a little bit of configuration. Um, None U-boot locations, when it is enabled, uh, enables the U-boot redundancy. Um, the, loca the location, the offsets, are used to um, specify where the um, double copy images are located, so you have uh, to <laughs> complete this with the real addresses. This is uh, the, re the re redundancy of U-boot. Uh, on the other end, we have the redundancy of the recovery. Um, it's simply it's simpler to implement this one because you only have to uh, place uh, the copy of the recovery at, mm, at certain partition, wherever you want. You have to double uh, that partition and implement a boot strategy in your bootloader. Here I, um, I give you a, an example of uh, how this can be implemented. Uh, the record the boot CMD emergency is the command that is used to um, run the emergency recovery, the one which is quiet uh, for the most life of your product because it, it isn't used because the main recovery works. If the main recovery, run recovery, doesn't work, uh, boot CMD C, uh, emergency runs and run the uh, double copy recovery. So you are always covered if something something goes wrong. Uh, how to enter recovery mode? You have several ways to enter recovery mode, user interaction. But um, the uh, most important thing you have to understand is that is the bootloader. Uh, responsible to enter the recovery mode. So you have to implement this part by yourself. Um, one approach you can use is uh, to have an environment variable in U-Boot that uh, 
um, sets, which is uh, the um, boot mode, normal boot mode, recovery boot mode. So if you set that variable uh, to one, example, recovery, setting recovery to one, and rebooting the board um, makes the system goes in recovery mode. Uh, you can do from you boot. you can do from user interaction, pressing a button uh, sets this, var this variable that uh, on the next boot will, uh, you will, will boot your system into recovery mode. Um, how to enter recovery mode in instead when something goes wrong? So if something's going wrong, probably you don't have user interaction. The system doesn't boot. And so it should uh, by himself uh, uh, decide what is uh, the best thing to do and this is uh, the mechanism that U-Boot offers. U-Boot offers a, as a boot count, boot limit and I'll boot CMD options. Uh, boot count is a variable that is zeroed each time the system boots correctly. If not zeroed, when it reaches a boot limit, uh, the L boot CMD is run in, instead of the normal boot CMD. So, uh, your, up, your update is go, uh, has gone wrong, uh, the system automatically knows and boot in recovery mode. This is tested. Uh, I personally uh, stressed on uh, one of our boards, uh, given power outages manually several times, and this worked quite, quite well. Okay, let's dive into software description. Uh, few minutes remaining. Uh, this is uh, the main configuration file. You have several uh, sections, okay. Uh, I strongly advise you to read the full manual to understand the, uh, all the features of the SV update because it is really a uh, complex piece of soft software. But this uh, configuration file resumes what you can do in a, a simple manner and um, it, it is uh, usable more or less uh, as is. There is an images section where you, uh, you have your images file. Uh, you have your file section where you can put random files wherever you want. The images section is the real images you have to write your, to your uh, um, uh, storage device. Uh, scripts, uh, custom scripts you want to run, play, post, uh, installing, or whatever, whatever you want and boot and variables, this can be used, uh, for example, to signal the system to not boot into the recovery mode the, mode the next time the system boots. So you reset the uh, recovery variable to zero and the system boots normally. As view file is the actual uh, update file. Uh, it, it is a CPIO archive. CPIO is a great format. Uh, I rediscovered uh, uh, when using SB update because it does checksum everywhere. So if one of the files in the GPO ch GPIO chain is broken, all the, the GPIO knows uh, immediately and signal that the update is not valid. It's not a, c a valid CPIO file. Um, I doesn't mention on purpose that SB update supports cryptography and uh, image signing because obviously it is a feature that is expectable from a software update system to guarantee the integrity. But again, read the manual and uh, uh, you end up uh, uh, signing and um, uh, checksumming everything in your um, SVU file. <coughs> it's really easy to build because uh, it, it, it is a CPIO, you have to concatenate the files. But <laughs> later I will show you a way to, to make this automatic. Uh, the last part, uh, I, I want to condensate it a little bit because it's not uh, something to scream in onto because it's simple, a make file that we use for building our project. But uh, one of the things I can say is that uh, most people that comes to the build route mailing list are asking for advice on how to set up their project. And um, it's not always... Um, um, simple to understand how to mix up your code with builder code, um, creating something that doesn't crash and doesn't clash uh, between build root code and your code. So this is my our uh, attempt to um, to templating to to give you a suggestion on what you can do. Uh, okay, so just to recap. 
you have to create your build root external tree, you have to add your software, you have to modify your configuration. You have to do the same for the recovery because, as we said previously, the recovery is built by build root, so it is another configuration with its own option, its own kernel, its own everything that should be built to have a uh, working, a running recovery image. Building, clean rebuilding until you have a working final configuration that produces the artifact that uh, you are expecting from the software. So, uh, why not automating it? And we did with a sample make file. Um, in this first part, um, we create the directory structure for the BR2 external. So, when you launch a make on this new make file, you will end up with a correct, always correct BR2 external uh, path. The system downloads build root. This make files down, uh, make file downloads build root from the main build root uh, website, not the Git version, but the tar.gzip version, because uh, we don't want to mess up with the build root source code. Build root is there, we use only. Uh, obviously, if you need to do something uh, with the build root source tree, you have to download the, the build root source tree directly from the build root git repository. We configure the build directories for um, uh, main configuration and recovery configuration. We added a clean command because cleaning is always uh, needed. This is, uh, in my opinion, the, the most smart thing, if, if we can uh, call it smart. Um, and it's building the image in, in the automated way. So we have to build two dev configs. So we have to load the sources from these packages. And we have to uh, produce binary images. Binary images, binary images will be obviously um, split between the, image, the output folders of the two configurations. So in the end, we uh, grab all the files we need and we move in another directory. Um, that is used to resume all the binary images you need. To build the SB update, really is nothing fancy, but uh, it is, sorry. Um, all the files you need uh, goes into uh, the update, but the first one should be always SV description. So um, it's a rule from SV update, SV update 5 should have uh, SV description on top. So this uh, sample script uh, assemble a CPIO archive for SV update with the files in the correct position. This sample um, make file is available at this URL if you want to mess up, you want to try to build your build root system with this uh, vision. Uh, let me know if, if uh, it will be usable to you uh, or um, uh, send up uh, giving you a, a good starting point uh, where it could be um, um, where I can be do better we can we can do better so if you are uh, interested uh, do a pull request and uh, let's discuss I don't know if you have any questions I'm here uh, anyway this is uh, the last slide. Resources, if you want. Questions. Thank you for your attention. It will be really a pleasure to be with you. We have a, a few minutes. If you have some questions, just a few minutes, because we have lunch, yeah. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye.